Hey, this is David, and this is an explanation of Beast, this SSL uh, TLS attack, and we'll dig right in. So here is how you use this CBC mode to encrypt and to decrypt. Remember, you have this IV and you XOR it with the plain text when you encrypt, and the IV for the next block of plain text is actually the previous block of ciphertext. So when you send your ciphertext, you send your IV, and you need this IV, this public IV to decrypt. All right? And there is an interesting way to use CBC in TLS 1.0 and previous versions. What they would do to obtain an IV for the next message to send, they wouldn't generate a new one. They would instead take the previous block of ciphertext. Kind of like you're continuing to encrypt like it's the same message, except it's not the same message. And now the, the new IV for the, the new message is now in advance. It's predictable, right? You can just observe the message that was sent and for the next message you, you'll know what the, the IV is. So this is pretty bad. The IV is supposed to be random in CBC and here it's predictable and this is the basis of Beast. So imagine that you are man in the middle in someone, a victim, and the victim is going on bank.com or something like that and they encrypt some plain text and you, you observe the ciphertext of that and you know that there, there is something important. Could be a session ID, a cookie, a password, could be anything, really. But you know it's important that you, and you want to, to decrypt it. And you know that after a while, could be the, the next message, could be uh, five messages later. But you know that you control one of the first plain text of, of one message. And this is actually not a crazy assumption. We realized not so long ago that uh, we have kind of some code execution on the, the client side, uh, thanks, to S, uh, thanks to the web. Because, you know, when, when, a, when a user, for example, visit your, your website, evil.com, you can pretty much put some JavaScript in there and, and you can execute it on the client's computer. Uh, it's limited, of course, but with it, you can make the client do some queries to bank.com, for example. And we know that for simple queries, the, the cookie of client will be sent to bank.com. And so you can try to, to observe those, those encrypted cookies and you can try to decrypt that if you're man in the middle of the, the client and the bank, right? So it's it's not totally crazy to, to be able to, to think that we're able to, to control some plain text on the victim side. And that allows us to do this chosen plain text uh, kind of attack. So there are different ways to, to do this attack and uh, an easier way if you're man in the middle in the client entirely is to just wait for the client to visit an HTTP website, so an insecure website, and to inject some of your JavaScript, Java, whatever, that will allow the client to make some queries over bank.com and you can control, kind of control those queries. So I hope I convinced you that we can control some plain text on the client side and we'll see how we formulate the attack. But, but the attack, the basis of the attack is here. We know that in TLS 1.0, uh, when they use CBC to encrypt with AES or any block cipher, the IV is not really an IV, but the previous block of cipher text. So, so when you send a message, I repeat again, you will save the last block of cipher text to encrypt your next message or to decrypt the next message. And we also control some of the plain text. And I'll say that we, we, we know the, the, the IV, I, I said that, right? Because before we can forge, before we can decide what we send in the victim's browser, we know the, what the IV is going to be. And we also uh, know the cipher text of the encryption of some, I don't know, cookie or something like that, that we want to decrypt. And the IV that was used to encrypt that, that thing we want to know. Okay. And now I'm going to say that I will make my plain text the previous ciphertext. So here you can take a pause and, and try to pause the video, for example, and try to imagine what would happen if I make my plain text the, the previous ciphertext. So the, the last block of ciphertext I observed being sent from the victim. Uh, but yeah, pretty much the, the, the ciphertext will, will cancel will be cancelled 
inside the plain text and what you will encrypt is a bunch of zero, 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 right? We don't really care about encrypting zeros, but we, we know how to cancel out the, the, the IV now or the presumed IV. And now I'll say that I want to make a plain text something different. I want to make it the XOR of the previous ciphertext, so the IV. The IV of the, the plain text we want to decrypt and the plain text uh, we want to obtain. All right? And I know this is kind of weird. We don't have this orange plain text, right? We, we want to decrypt this, uh, the corresponding ciphertext, so we don't know that yet. But I'll twist your brand, and, and for the next slides, we'll just assume that we know it, okay? So what is that plain text doing? Okay, maybe you can pause the video again and try to imagine what, what's happening if we choose that plain text. Yeah, if we choose that plain text, we cancel the ciphertext, right? And we end up with what? We end up with exactly what was being encrypted previously. Right? And so if this is correct, if the, the we, we really chose that as the plain text, then we'll obtain the same ciphertext as well, right? And we can observe that they match and we know uh, we use the correct plain text, the thing we want to decrypt. So we don't know that thing, right? And what we want to do is to guess it. Actually, we, we want to try to guess that part so that if we choose the correct plain text in the way I did it, we'll observe the same ciphertext uh, being repeated. But how to guess that part, right? If, if we think of AES, any key size of AES, you have one block size, it's 128 bits. So we cannot guess 120 bits. That's impossible. Or we have to be very lucky. What we can do is try to reduce that number of bits we want to, to, to guess by making most of the bits in that plain text noun. So how can we do that? Well, I'm making my victim do the following requests. It's a post request on some weird path, blah, with a lot of A's. And I have this weird path because I want one of these important header, the, the password here, the super password could be cookie, could be a session ID, whatever you want. But I want it to take most, I want something that I know to take most of the, the, the space in this block of plain text. And so here you can see that the only a noun is one byte. So I'm trying to guess one byte of the cookie. I'm starting with one byte. All right. And here what I'll, I'll do when I construct my plain text is that I know everything. I know the previous IV. I know the IV that was used to encrypt the thing I want to guess. And I know most of the thing I want to guess. It's a cookie equals session ID equals whatever. And then I, I can say equals A. If it doesn't work, I do equals B equals C on and on until I obtain a matching ciphertext. Now, how do I obtain the next byte? So you can pause the video again and, and try to imagine how we could obtain, uh, how we could decrypt the next byte of the super password. Yeah, we can just remove an A from the path. You see here, I remove an A and it kind of shifts my plain text block, and now I can guess the second byte. I already guessed the first byte, I'm saying it's F, and now I can try to guess the second byte with exactly the same technique. And this kind of attack is actually the basis for a lot of different attacks on SSL, or the way to exploit a lot of different attacks. Uh, for example, on the top of my mind, uh, Poodle. And now, and, and RC4, I believe, you can exploit like that as well. And so now we can wonder how to fix this. Well, to fix this, just use TLS 1.1, TLS 1.2. That's the easy way, right? Because they, they just fix it. They use, uh, they use real IVs after that. But what if we don't want or we cannot use a more modern version of TLS? For example, we're using legacy systems. Can you guess how we could fix that? Well, one way to do it and that's what Chrome did very quickly to fix this issue back then, uh, was to do zero and split. And basically, when you send a request from the client, from the browser, 
what you will do is that you send first an empty message. And basically, you can see that the previous ciphertext, which was noun, is used as an IV to some empty plain text. So basically, you encrypt the previous ciphertext. And it creates a new ciphertext, which will be the IV for your message. And here it goes too fast for you to do anything because you cannot see that, that ciphertext that will be used as the IV. And we know it's random, or at least random looking, because that's uh, one of the property of block cipher. So that didn't work that well because some servers didn't like the empty message and Chrome actually broke uh, the web for a lot of users and people were not happy at Chrome. Um, and so they, they, they came up with a better way to fix it or a more hacky way to fix it, uh, which is called the one and minus one split. And here you, you don't send an empty message first, but you send the first byte of your message first. And below I have an example, it's a screenshot from Wireshark. You can see that the first byte, the G letter from the GET request is being encrypted first, and then you send the next message. And that's about it. We, we saw how this works, how it is exploitable, and how it is fixable. So you can follow me on Twitter, you can follow my blog on cryptology, the French spelling.net. And if you want more videos, of course, there are more on my channel. Thanks for watching.